Hello and welcome to Love and Sounds Off, where we talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. Thanks for having me on the show, Logan. The pleasure is mine. Good. So, welcome to Love and Sounds Off. And for those who don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. My name is Ryan Walsh, and I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, which is where I'm recording right here and live and work and um i'm a musician and a writer and i've had a band called hallelujah the hills since late 2005 um and uh i've written a lot about music and other topics and in 2018 my first book was published by penguin press yeah it's called astro weeks a secret history 1968 and uh yeah that's the those are the bullet points so I'm going to ask now, how did you get into music? Oh, okay. Well, I have two older brothers, and I really think they have a lot to do with it because they loved good, great music. <laughs> and so, you know, I think when other kids maybe were getting into like, you know, in Boston in the 80s, new, uh, new Kids on the Block, or maybe something a little cheesier or lighter, they had me listening to The Pogues and The Clash and Bruce Springsteen. And so um, I really loved it. And I would like borrow or steal their cassettes for a little while so I could listen to it privately in my earphones, you know, on my Walkman, on my bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just gave me, it, music always just gave me the greatest feeling. And, um, and it, but it took a while for me to believe that I could make it myself. Wow. Um, I've talked to a lot of people and a lot of the time it's actually family members. Sure, yeah. And now I, I'm kind of following on from that. And who were your influences growing up, or your idols? Mm. Well, I mean, my, so like I said, my brothers were calling the shots for a while, you know, and I love those bands, but probably like the, when it, the first band I decided, I think, to love myself um, was Faith No More. I don't know if you know them, but. Yeah, Faith No More. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from San Francisco area, and I just love them. I saw them so many times live. It's not the kind of music I make at all, but mm -hmm. th their music meant so much to me. I think it's so uh, funny and interesting and cool, and uh, it can be a bit goofy or a bit. Uh, I, I don't even. Uh, I don't even know what to say. But. Uh, it's all kinds. Of, it's all kinds of things. They're not just one thing. And I really always appreciated that. So that was kind of like the, the first, and that was like middle school, and that's where yeah. I started to choose my own artists that I would, you know, get interested in. So you were saying there about your band, Hallelujah the Hills. Why did you start a band? Why did I start a band? Well, because I, I just loved. I got I became addicted to music, and so many times listening to this, my favorite songs, I would be like it must feel so good to sing this if I was Joe Strummer or if I was, you know, yeah. you know, I was like, what does Joe it feel Strummer like? Joe Strummer especially. Yes, I right? Put that yes. out there, yeah. Yeah, and, and in fact, Logan, my first musical performance technically was we had this thing called the uh, kind of a lip sync contest air band at summer camp. And, you know, you pretend you're playing the song and they play the track. Yeah. And so my, bro my brother uh, selected uh, the clamp down by The Clash. And we all did tennis rackets for guitar. So I was like, oh, no way. I was like Mick Jones with a tennis racket, I guess, playing rhythm guitar. Or does he, what is he playing that song? I forget. But so that was like my first taste of live performance, even. And so, yeah. So it, it just kept me asking that question what, what must it feel like to uh, sing this song led to a slow path to try it myself? Wow. So from Fate No More to yep. The Clash. You know, yep. oh, wow. um, and then you mentioned at the start of the interview, when I asked, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? And um, you said about your book, Astro Weeks, mm -hmm. and um, that it was published by Penguin Press. And I wanted to ask, why did you decide to write a book about Van Morrison? Well, because his album, Astro Weeks, is just one of my favorites. And that was a little after the music we just talked about. I think it was the... Um, sort of the end of college where I discovered that album Master Weeks. I, of course, had heard Vance hits up until them and enjoyed them. 
And that album just meant so much to me. It was a lifeline for me during a difficult time. And, you know, everyone knows Vance from Ireland, especially you, I'm sure, being there. And, and so it would, so when I heard rumors or whispers or insinuations that Astral Weeks had something to do with Boston, that he was here right before he made it, I said, that is very confusing information. <laughs> I need to know why. And, you know, you flip over the back cover of Astral Weeks and there's references yeah. to Cambridge and Cape Cod. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so it was that question. Why is this album associated with Boston that started, led to the magazine article, which led to the book? Wow. And then that was 2018. It released so Astral Weeks. March. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So two, 2015, the magazine article came out. Yeah. Later, later that year, I got the book deal. And then... And then, yeah, it takes years to write, research, write, and then it get edited and printed. It's a long process to get a book out. Wow. Um, yeah. And then this is like a big question. I like, have you ever met Van himself? Have you ever no, I haven't. Him? No, certainly not. And I, I tried to, I was interested in interviewing him for the book, of course, or the magazine article. And, you know, it was just, if it, I'm sure, as you know, Van is uh, doesn't love to do interviews. Probably more now than ever. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, that's a be, very good point. Uh, he can be yes, he yeah. can be super cantankerous and agitated. But I, I, I still was interested, and no matter what we tried, there was just no uh, response. I had literally talked to every other living person who was on the record Astral Weeks except him. And uh, that must have seriously hurt. God. Who? Who? No, I'm saying, I know I'm saying, <laughs> imagine just, you yeah. know, I talked to all of them in our van. Wow. Um, but, that, but I'll tell you, Logan, at a certain point, it became, yeah, it became a good thing. It was like, it was an interesting, it was like, he was almost like a ghost in the story because, you know, he's not that young man anymore who wow. I'm writing about. Yeah, actually. It that became, is it, it became interesting. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Um, that's actually a very fair point. And then Emma, you're right actually about Van and not liking interviews. I've heard that before a little bit about him. Um, but that Astral Weeks album and then the Moonlighting album and uh, Moon uh, Moon Dance. Yeah, so yeah, sorry. Why did I say moonlighting? Because it's a I terrific, think. terrific um, TV show starring uh, Bruce Willis and yeah. uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm wondering. Where <laughs> um, but some of his music was brilliant. So, um, mm. um, Agreed. what was it like to get the best, uh, like, rock artist award for Boston? Wow. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, there's a they have a local music awards called the Boston Music Awards, and uh, yeah, in 2015 we won best rock band and and also for video and i make all our music videos or so far i do almost all of them actually my friend tyler derryberry made a great one for the last album and um it felt great you know it's always nice to be recognized by your peers in your hometown and um you know we don't at times we've tried to tour a lot and sometimes we get out there but a lot of what we do is local and a lot of what i like to do is write and record songs so um you know, sometimes it's hard to get get the same audiences in Boston that we get get elsewhere because um, you know we're we're travel slow. Oh, you'll get there someday. Thank you. You That's will the get spirit. there someday. <laughs> well, and to be honest, like, I know a, a lot of people like when I was reading interviews about you, everybody yeah. seemed like they loved this band. And obviously, you definitely obviously. deserved um, the award. But with your band, is there anything coming soon? Like, are you working on anything at the moment? It's not mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we just released a brand new song, I think, three weeks ago called Super Glue to You. Okay. And it's, uh, it's a fun, short song. It's got a great guitar solo. We're not always known for guitar solos on our songs, so <laughs> that's why I mention it. But... Um, we yes, there's we are working on a lot, and I can't explain what it is just yet. But um, we got a new song coming out uh, 
later this summer. So we're really, we're busy right now and it feels good. We feel like we're um, firing on all cylinders creatively, you know? Brilliant. Well, yeah. I actually listened. I think I listened to that song, Super Glue to You, on Spotify. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. I and it appreciate was a very that. good song. And Thank you. I mean, have you got any gigs coming up? Like, are you doing any live performances? Yeah, so we just, we played this weekend, but, um, which means now I can announce that we're, uh, for all you uh, Ireland listeners, plan your international travel now. September 10th at Jamaica Plain, which is part of Boston, J JP Music Festival. Um, we're going to play that next. Wow. So you've obviously got a lot to do. Are you working on any more books? Well, uh, right now I'm working on an article for The Believer magazine. You ever hear that? The Believer magazine? Oh. It's good. They write a lot about music. But this article I'm working on isn't about music. So there's a little bit of a departure for me. But that's fun. It's good. Good for the brain, you know? Yeah. But I always keep busy. And uh, I would love to write a second book. And I'm sure I will someday. But it's, um, it's just in the ideas phase right now. Well, I uh, like, with your band. Wow. Like, you are saying it was local that you were saying with your band? And um, I heard that there was this particular studio. Uh -huh. I was quite intrigued by this, that you went to for all the albums. Which, which studio was that? And can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we've used different studios, so I'm not sure what I said. But... Oh, I did, do you know, that was a 2015. 2015, okay, so... That was seven years ago. That's um, true. Oh, so I think I know what you're talking about. And that's um, a studio up near Rochester, New York, uh, called uh, 1809 Studios. Yes, that was it was. Yeah. Because I remember you saying you use that studio a lot. Two yeah. albums in a row, and Dave Drago producing and engineering. And it, what was great about that studio, Logan, is it's, um, it's, it's a bit of a drive for us. You know, it's like, I forget, it's like 10 hours or something. Or, and wow. and so and they have they have barracks there almost like like you're at summer camp you know bunk yes. beds and so we would do sleepaway style let's go there let's all stay there four or five days make a whole album and then go home because if you're making a, an album in your own city the temptation for people like well i'm gonna go out to dinner with my girlfriend and i'm gonna go walk the dog and then suddenly you know you look around yeah. and and no one's there to do overdubs with you so it was a way to get us all out of our normal routine so we would just focus on the albums. Wow. Yeah. And, and you're saying there with uh, like a li your little road trip for 10 hours. I said this to a guy that he yeah. was in Boston as well. Yeah. And I said, there is no 10 hour drives in Ireland. No matter oh, right. where you go. Right. It's six hours from Boston to the yep. top. Okay. So that'll give you an overview of how tiny Ireland is and how so many people, no, so many other people, it's crazy. It's like a small country. It's, it's a small, they say it's, it's a, a small, small town, world small country. In Ireland. <laughs> Very small. Um, and no, I, you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so with your. I city, have been there once, Logan. Have you? I did. I went, I went to the Belfast Literary Festival when the book came out. Wow. Um, yeah. So my final question, um, what was it like getting, like signing the deal to get like um, your book by po like Penguin Press? Mm -hmm. They're a very big publishing company. Mm -hmm. um, what was that like for you? It was a beautiful moment. It was a dream come true for sure. I, um, you know, I, uh, I would have always liked to, write a book but I wasn't sure it would ever happen so when Ed Park who edited the book reached out to me after reading the magazine article I thought someone was pranking me at first but it was real and uh and then I worked really really hard on it and um one of the hardest things I've ever done writing that book but also one of the most rewarding and and the nice thing is um people find it over the years people are discovering it all the time and reaching out to me because they're interested in one musician that's in it and it leads them to it, you know, or someone recommends it. 
So um, it's kind of a thrill to people reach out and I'm just reading it now and this is blowing my mind. It's a, it's a, and it was a real honor to get to write all that history that had sort of been forgotten or ignored. Yeah, it was, it was the thrill of a lifetime, really. Now, I did just say that was my last question, but I've also- Yeah, so long, bye. I know I've actually got another question. I just remembered it. I'm such an idiot. No, um, you're not. You're great. This is a great now, show. I've got a question now. Yeah. How do you go about writing your songs? Okay. Well, oh, um, I, I'm usually, okay. Well, I'll say this. I keep a notebook with me or on my phone. And anytime I think of a phrase or a title or something that could be a title, or even if I don't think it, if I overhear someone say it, or if I read a sign that has an interesting phrase in it, I write it down. And then um, when it's time to write a song, you know, I have all this raw material in a notebook. I sit down with my acoustic guitar, which is right over here. Yeah. And I'll just start to, uh, I'll, you know, I'll try to find an, a chord progression that captures my attention. And then I'll start to try to sing some of those words over it until I find a vocal melody. So you can, yeah, no, you continue, you continue. Sorry. Well, oh no, I mean, just to say that, uh, uh, you know, if the, if the song is good or if you're lucky, something cohesive comes from that moment where you're kind of just free associating with these couple different ingredients you put in your lap, you know? Cool. And then yeah. you said you played guitar. Do you play sure do. instruments apart from guitar? I play, I've been writing on piano lately just because uh, I'm not as good as piano, at piano as guitar. I'm a good rhythm guitarist, but piano uh, is a little, I'm less, way less proficient, but that makes you, but you play it different and it's organized different. So I write different kind of song on piano. So I've been doing that lately. Wow. And um, so, Thank you for coming on. We had a couple of final questions there. Um, thank you, Logan. But thank you for coming on. I am the pleasure has been all mine. I've loved talking to you, and I hope you see you again in the future. All right, Logan. Take care, and um, uh, I think it's really cool you do this show. And thanks for having me on it. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. At Logan Sounds Off. And if you have any questions or requests, you can email Logan Sounds Off at gmail.com.